Okay. So today we start with the, the part on functional analysis. So we leave for some moment uh, the PD equations and, uh, and uh, we start on apparently different subject, which is functional analysis. Okay, so, so let, take, let us take a, a vector space. Uh, vector space on, on R. So we confine ourselves considering always uh, vector space on R and not on C. So the theory on C is uh, sometimes more complicated, so, so we prefer to, to consider real vector space. So probably everybody knows what is a vector a, a scalar product On, on V. Huh? Everybody knows what is, what is a scalar product. Huh? So it is uh, maybe uh, it is not necessary that I write it. It is just linear. It is a function of two variables, which is linear. So linear uh, separately in both in the linear in, uh, so let, let me write it. So alpha x plus beta y comma z is equal to alpha x z plus beta y z for any x, y, z and for any alpha and beta in R. So we have linearity. We have uh, uh, similarly linear in the other variables. So uh, uh, say x alpha beta plus alpha y plus uh, beta z is equal to alpha x y plus beta xz. So we have linearity in both the two variables, in the two entries, and uh, we have also x, x uh, bigger or equal than zero. Uh, and then we have um, um, x zero, uh, x y, say, equal y x x0 equals 0, and um, x, x equals 0 implies x equals 0. Hmm? So it is linear. Symmetric. Symmetric, so linear, symmetric, uh, on the same x, vector x is non-negative, and is, it is uh, non-degenerate, namely, uh, namely, x, x equal to 0 if and only if x equal to 0. Hmm? OK. So this is a scalar product. Uh, each of these, uh, each of these uh, it, it may happen that, in general, one, ca one should relax this, these assumptions. So, for instance, this can be relaxed by assuming, by dropping, by dropping, um, by assuming only this. Hmm? So, in principle, there could be vectors which are orthogonal, non-zero vectors which are orthogonal to themselves. This could happen. Could happen. But, for, uh, but for us in this course it will not happen, okay? So this, in principle, 
can be relaxed, but for us, uh, we keep this property. Also, it may happen that you, we have a scalar product which is sometimes negative. Uh, and still also this could happen, but we don't, we don't care. So this is our definition for the course, okay? So we take this. Okay, now uh, given a scalar product, we can consider the following definition. Uh, x equal, maybe x squared equal to xx. Now this is a norm. This is a norm. So uh, is a norm, in, uh, what is a norm in general? So, so this is a definition, scalar product, and then we have also a norm. So this is a norm. If um, essentially we have alpha x equal to alpha x for any alpha in R for any x in V, and then uh, it is so this is uh, one homogeneous one homogene one homogeneity then we have sublinearity which means uh, this for any x and y in v and then we have uh, okay um, from this, it follows that the zero vector has a zero norm. But uh, say we, we add, if and only say x equal to zero. Hmm? So this is a norm. So this is a scalar product. This is a norm. So the exercise home homework is if this is a scalar product, then that is a norm. So home if is a scalar product scalar also called inner product eh? sometimes it's called inner product inner same is the same uh, inner product then uh, then is a norm Okay, so this is enormous. Okay, so th this is a very, very easy exercise. Okay, uh, so given a scalar product, we can always construct a norm, and the converse is not always true. So one of the questions is uh, when, so we can go from this to this, and the question is when we can go from a norm to a scalar product. Okay, so uh, let me just make some remark. Maybe some examples. Okay, examples. Examples, uh, well, in our N, it is, we all we, all we know that uh, x, y equal by this is a scalar product, okay? Uh, not only this, but if we have, say, a matrix, capital A, which is symmetric and positive definite, A matrix n, I, n times n matrix symmetric and positive definite, huh? then uh, this is also a scalar product. 
Okay. YJ, sorry, YJ. Uh, associated to this, we have by this exercise the, the this is the standard Euclidean scalar pro, inner product, and then associated to this, we have the standard Euclidean norm. All all of us know that this is the standard Euclidean norm. This is slightly less standard, and it is just. Um, Okay, another norm, Riemannian norm. This is called the Riemannian norm in Rn, where the metric, Riemannian metric, is identified by these numbers now. Okay. Um, it is useful to remark that uh, uh, given a norm, we can consider the unit ball. set of all points x in v such that x in norm is less than or equal than 1. Essentially, once, once we know this, now this set has various properties. Uh, we will go to, to the property of this set, but essentially a norm is, a, is identified by its unit ball. So if you know what is this, then you, you know the norm. And conversely, if you know the norm, you know what is this. We will see this. Uh, in this case, uh, of course, the unit ball in our n is just a, a sphere. And in this case, it's in an, an ellipsoid. Uh, it is just an ellipsoid. OK. Um, Other examples, maybe. Yes, examples can be can be made on uh, on spaces of matrices. Say, if you have matrices uh, n times n t matrices uh, m1, m, and then, then you can take the trace of m n, for instance. These are matrices, uh, square, square matrices. And so you can consider this object here as a scalar product between two matrices. Or, uh, yes. Uh, maybe it is more, it is more correct to, to take the transposed matrix here, but just uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Now, um, more interesting example for us is another scalar product on this space. Uh, what is this space? Is this space so is the set of all x into r omega. Now, uh, countable product. So the notation. By this, uh, we mean countable product of Vi where Vi is R. So it's a countable product of R. Uh, maybe we can also use the notation R to the n. Huh? Uh, okay, so uh, this is the set of all, if you want, real sequences. This is a sequence. Right? Huh? 
because this is nothing else identifiable by all maps. from n to r, right? Therefore, this is a, se this is a sequence, huh? real sequence. So this consists of all x, which is a real sequence, such that, however, this is finite. Huh? Oh, this is maybe the most important space that uh, we will consider in these lectures. It's, it's, it's very complicated. It's very difficult to understand what is this. Hmm? OK. Uh, but, but there is a scalar product on it. So x and y. Um, xk, yk, so con prove that it is a scalar product, an inner product, is an inner product. Um, Uh, maybe as homework, uh, try to construct something which is not an inner product. Uh, home. For instance, check that maybe this is not this is not an inner product, for instance. Try to understand why this is not. Um, okay, to maybe to 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 understand why this is an inner product is also useful to make the following remark, which maybe again uh, I can leave you as homework because it's very simple also, but very useful. So of course, this is the first example that we see of uh, vector space with infinite dimension. So uh, now, what is the dimension must be defined. But for the moment, it is rather clear that this is an infinite dimensional vector space. Okay? And all the difficulties in functional analysis come exactly because of the infinite dimension. Hmm? So maybe another homework. OK. Home x, y square less than. Now, I, I use the notation. Well, maybe, maybe let, me, let me write it like this. For any x, y, in D. Okay, this is called the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Uh, I think this is useful uh, so that. If two elements are in this space, so this is finite, this infinite sum. So if this infinite sum is finite, if this infinite sum is finite, then also this infinite sum is finite. And we have that inequality. So, um, well, maybe a hint, if you want. Consider the following polynomial, quadratic polynomial, P, that I denote by P of lambda, uh, x plus lambda y, x plus lambda y, where lambda is real. So, 
So consider this uh, quadratic polynomial, which is x, x plus, maybe let me write like this, lambda square y, y plus 2 lambda x, y plus x, x. Hmm? And then go on by yourself in the sense that, okay, this is a quadratic polynomial. It is non-negative because of the uh, properties of our scalar products. Huh? Uh, not only this, but since we have linearity and we have symmetry, this is also this. So linearity plus symmetry gives us this. And then, okay, this is non-negative. Therefore, we can say something about the determinant of this quadratic polynomial. And from this something, we have to deduce. You have to deduce this. Okay? Um, okay. Uh, or maybe also uh, when there is equality, when there is equality, when there is equality here. So assume that, so f of course there is equality if x and y, wh either x or y are zero. But assume uh, for, for, for which x different from 0 and y different from 0, there is, is there an equality here? Yeah, they must be parallel. So they are, but, but check by yourself. They must be parallel, OK? Parallel in the sense that one is the multiple of the other, OK? Fine. So let me go on quickly with this, which is very simple. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, let me write down some some. Uh, some, so keep in mind, so this space, space of sequences uh, which are integrable, so, so that, such that this sum is finite. Of course, one could consider a more general space, but since now for the moment we have scalar products, let us confine ourselves. But this is the real, really the generalization of our n. So this is, this generalized, generalizes our n. Okay, so. This is, I mean, when we work in, usually in analysis, we think about our n, right? In functional analysis, maybe uh, it is better as, as a model in mind is to have this. So infinite dimension, but uh, the, maybe the, the simplest object with infinite dimension somehow. Where, where we have a, a sort of Euclidean structure, a Euclidean norm somehow, like this, okay? Uh, if you consider this, if you consider this is not maybe the, uh, the, the, most, the most natural object, at least generalizing this. Because for instance, this object here, in, in, inside this, there are several points with infinite this. If you want to put a distance here, and if you want to consider this as a natural distance uh, norm, then you immediately see that this has a lot of, of points with infinite distance one each other. Uh, so I mean, if you take just a sequence here, such that this is infinite, uh, then this means that the distance of that sequence from the origin is infinite. So uh, if you want to put on, on this a distance of this sort, then a lot of points have distance infinite one each other which is maybe something that we want to avoid, OK? So maybe it is better to, to, to have in mind this smaller space, OK? 
instead of this. Hmm? OK. Now, it is interesting to remark that even in infinite dimensions, we still have something. So if I have in, in, in the plane, if I have two points, x and y, uh, and then I consider this and this, so I have a parallelogram. And then I have x plus y and x minus y. And there is a relation between uh, x, uh, there is a relation between x plus y square and x minus y square. Huh? So one half of this is equal to x squared plus y squared. So if I take the length, see, sorry, <laughs> if I take the length of this square, and then I sum with the length of this square, I have that this is one half the length of this square plus the length of this square, parallelogram identity. Well, this is true also in infinite dimensions. It is true in any, uh, if you have, I mean, if you have a scalar product, so if, then this is still true. This identity holds. Well, it is immediate, so ch check this by yourself. Okay, it is immediate proof. Um, so home. So in, in any vector space with an inner product, this identity holds. Hmm? This is the, the homework. Is it clear? A more, a more curious exercise, so home. Suppose that P from v, v in R is not exactly a norm, but satisfies the following. P of lambda alpha, lambda alpha. Yeah. When I wrote, write, wrote the norm, I used alpha or the lambda alpha. 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 alpha p of x, uh, p of x plus y less than or equal than p of x plus p of y. Hmm? Uh, suppose just this, then So from this, it is clear that p of 0 is equal to 0. Hmm? Because uh, I, I, I just take uh, uh? I just take alpha equal to 0 here. So this is 0, and this is a finite number, because we have real values. So since this is finite, and this is 0, and the product is 0. So this is clear. Less clear is that uh, p of x uh, is always less, larger or equal than 0. Huh? For any x. Try to see whether this is true or not. Can you prove this? So this is not, not exactly a norm. Eh? It's just, maybe this is called just a semi-norm. Eh? This is just a semi-norm. Maybe this, so this is uh, semi-norm. Uh, 
uh, which is the difference with the norm, we don't know that if this is zero, then x is zero. This, this we don't know. This we, we cannot say. Uh, so there is the word semi, not, not exactly norm. So we cannot deduce that, I, I say once again, we cannot deduce that if p of x is 0, then x is 0. This we cannot deduce. And indeed, um, analogously, there is uh, the notion of semi-inner product uh, in which you cannot say that if x comma x is 0, then x is 0. This you cannot say. Huh? OK, so um, this you cannot say. So try to see whether it is true or this, this. OK, now. Um, uh, another home work home if is a norm then has this following Lipschitz property Particularly, it is continuous. Hmm? Okay. So we have seen, so remark, um, if is a scalar product. then the parallelogram identity holds. Now we would like to see when a norm comes from a scalar product. And there is a theorem here. Theorem. Let this be a norm. such that the parallelogram identity holds. Huh? Define, so if we have the parallelogram identity, look, look at this. Uh, define this object here, 1, 4. Okay, one four x plus y square minus x minus y square. Hmm? So if the norm if the norm what is this object is not so clear, right? However, if the norm comes from a scalar product, what is this? Is the scalar product. Because x squared cancels with this x squared. y squared cancels with this y squared. 2xy sum with this 2xy. So we have 4xy. 4 divided by 4 gives you, gives you xy, x comma y, right? If Is it, is it clear? Yes. yes? So, but the problem is that we don't know that this comes from a scalar product. So the theorem says that if the parallelogram identity holds, then this is a scalar product. Uh, 
And this is the answer to one of the previous questions, when a norm comes from a scalar product. If and only if the parallelogram identity holds. Hmm? OK. Now, the proof of this theorem is not easy. We will try to do it now. But the important fact is that you have a general, a general picture in mind. So we have scalar products, which gives us norms. And in general, a norm is not coming from a scalar product in view of this, essentially, because not all norms satisfy the parallelogram identity. We will see that not all norms satisfy the parallelogram identity. Hmm? Are, are, questions, are there questions on this? Is this, is this picture clear? OK. Um, so now we have to prove this theorem. Okay. So I, I erase the Lipschitz proper, Lipschitz, <coughs> one Lipschitz property of the norm. And I have to erase this. So let me try to prove this. And this must be so proof. So what do we see from this definition? OK. So first of all, we see that A of x and 0 is 0. A of 0, y is 0. Hmm? OK, this we, we see from the definition. Then what else we see? We see that A of x, y is also equal to a y x so symmetry hmm? symmetry it is clear hmm? um, a of x x also is bigger or equal than zero because this is zero because of the property of uh, of a norm okay norm not semi norm norm okay So this we see. Uh, and also we see maybe that uh, a minus x y is equal to minus a x y. Huh? And also a x minus y equal minus a x y. Okay. These, these properties are clear from, from the definition. Now, the, 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 more, the more difficult point is linearity and homogeneity. So the, for linearity, so let us start with A of x1. So let, let me call this a, x1, yes, y, plus A x2, y. So I start from this, and I would like to prove that this is equal to A x1 plus x2, y. This I would like to prove. Hmm? It's not so clear from the definition. It is not so clear because we cannot expand. I mean, this is not, a, for the moment, it does not come from a scalar product. So I cannot expand it as a pro scalar product with x plus y with itself. So what, what can I do? So, OK, so let, we keep the definition. One four x one plus y plus x two plus y square minus x one minus y square minus x two minus y square 
And then we make the following position. So we apply the parallelogram identity with the choice um, x1 plus y and x2 plus y. So let me write here the parallelogram identity once more. So we have one half x plus y squared plus x minus y squared equal to x squared plus y squared. So and let me apply it uh, with the choice uh, with the choice x1 plus y in place of x and, the, and x2 plus y in place of y. Hmm? So if this is x and this is y, then I have that uh, x1 plus y square plus x2 plus y square is equal to one half um, x1 plus x2 plus 2y square plus uh, x1 plus uh, x1 plus y minus x2 minus y square. Okay? So uh, now what I am trying to do is to compute this. Eh? And I see that from the parallelogram identity, this is equal to this. Hmm? OK. Now, now I want to compute separately this. Hmm? So and I apply, again, the parallelogram identity now with the choice x1 minus y and x2 minus y, OK? And so the second addendum can be written as follows. So x1 minus y squared plus x2 minus y squared is actually equal to. So 1 half, and then I have this plus this. So x1 plus x2 minus 2y squared. 2y squared plus, and then I have, uh, and then I have the difference, so this minus this minus x2 squared. Okay. And therefore, now I can substitute this with this and this with this, huh? and I, I obtain that a of x1, y plus a of x2, y. Now I substitute and there is a cancellation here. So I have 1, 4 multiplied by this, 1 half this, x1 plus x2 plus 2y squared uh, minus x1 plus x2 minus 2y squared, OK? OK? And the, sorry, the 1 half is also here. Eh? Thank you. Now, what is this? Well, this is uh, 1 half uh, a of um, a of what? X1 plus X2. X1 plus X2. 2Y. OK? It is this. OK. So let us keep in mind that for now, if you agree with this, now I cancel everything. I just write the result. Is it OK? Huh? So let me now uh, forget this computation and let me just write what I have found here. So this is just as a consequence of the hypothesis pa parallelogram identity. Okay, I wait a little bit. Maybe I can already write here um, a 
of x1 plus x2 to y. Okay. So now if I take x1 equal to x and x2 equal to 0, since a of 0y is 0, I obtain that a of xy is equal to 1 half a of x to y. And therefore, we don't have yet the, uh, the homogeneity, but in the second variable, at least, uh, we can put out, outside and inside the two <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> OK. OK. Now, from this, it follows that A of x1 plus x2 y, if I apply this with the choice of x like x1 plus x2, then I have one half a of a x1 plus x2 to y. Okay. And so this is equal to this. Okay, and therefore we see that there is linearity in the first variable. Okay, additivity, say additive in the first variable. Okay. Now, by induction, since this is true at this level, then by induction for any. Uh, for any uh, x, since we have linearity in the uh, additivity in the first variable, then we have that this is true for any m in n by induction. Hmm? Hmm? Not only this, but remember that I can change sign here. So that this is true also for any m in z. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Now let let me go here. Um, we have a of mx over 2y now is what? Is a, now I use the symmetry, mx over 2. Hmm? Uh, uh, this is equal to Uh, this is equal to m over 2 by this property a of y x and therefore this is equal to m over 2 a of x y uh, by induction once more from this we deduce that a of This is equal to this. Hmm? 
for any m integer for any n natural. Now, we also know that the set of the adic numbers uh, is dense in R. Okay. So the set of all numbers of that form is dense in R. And we also know that A is continuous. Why A is continuous? Huh? Why A is continuous? Because norm is Lipschitz, and therefore is continuous. And this is the difference of two continuous functions. OK, A is continuous. That is dense. This implies passing to the limit that we have one homogeneity in, uh, huh? So we have A of lambda x, y, alpha, sorry, equal to alpha A of x, y for any alpha. Okay. Okay. I think that this is all because then we have symmetry. We can exchange x and y. So, and this concludes. So, you see, the proof is not trivial at all. Huh? Even if the, the, the tools that you can use are just two or three objects, two or three tools, it's only that. But if you mix them in a proper way, then you end up with this non trivial result. Okay? So, you need actually all the properties of the norm, continuity also. Hmm? So this is a scalar product, is linear, homogeneous, etc. One homogeneous, uh, symmetric, positive, definite, non-negative, etc. So maybe. Okay, definition. Uh, let be a norm on V. So we say that it's uniformly convex. If for any x such that for any x in V such that x is less than or equal than 1. For any y in V such that y is lesser or equal than 1. For any epsilon positive, uh, such, uh, for any epsilon positive such that um, x minus y uh, is bigger than 1 minus epsilon. There exists delta positive such that uh, x plus y over 2 is less than or equal than 1 minus delta. Hmm. This is uniform convexity. Um, so this says that if I have a point here and I have a point here, Hmm. 
and uh, the distance between x and y is not zero. So no, sorry. Let me take this closer. X and y, and the distance between x and y is is uh, is not no, no is bigger than is non zero is bigger than epsilon. So if the distance is bigger than epsilon, if this here and this difference is bigger than epsilon, then the sum divided by two is not uh, on the boundaries. So if I take now the sum divided by two, uh, I lie strictly inside the unit ball. Now, even if I start from, say, one point in the boundary of the unit ball and another point in the boundary unit ball, uh, and I, I know the, 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 the distance is a little bit positive. Then when I take the difference and divide it by 2, the sum and divide it by 2, then I do not fall on the boundary of the ball. But, but I, I am inside the ball of a small quantity delta depending on epsilon just. So what is an example for which this is not true? Huh? Assume that x is here and y is here. Huh? Then what I see, I see that, and assume that x minus y is, is not zero. I mean, it's just this uh, epsilon. Then I take the the sum divided by two. And this is not less than or equal than 1 minus delta because it falls exactly on the boundary of the ball. Hmm? So this is a way to say that uh, somehow the ball <laughs> is sort of, um, the ball is sort of more, more than convex. It is a little bit, uh, no, I don't want to say strictly convex, because strictly convex could be, could be a different concept. OK, uh, it's more or less like to say that it's strict convex, but not, not exactly, not, not exactly. It is this, so, OK? And of course, this definition, there is no, I don't differentiate. I don't say that the curvature is positive or something. I cannot say it because I don't know what is the curvature. I mean infinite dimension. So I cannot say anything. This, this object is just a convex set. The unit ball of the norm is just convex. Nothing else. Infinite dimensions. Huh? So. Um, The result is theorem if this comes from a scalar product, uh, if this comes from a scalar product, uh, then this is uniformly convex. Therefore, this, this says something about the geometry of the, of the space. So this, say, this, this informs us about, uh, about the geometry of the unit ball. So in a Hilbert space, OK, in finite dimension, the unit ball is always an ellipsoid, finite dimension. Hmm? Do you agree? Is always an ellipsoid. And of course, the ellipsoid is uh, uniformly convex, is smooth, is strictly convex, whatever, it's everything. Uh, this, is, this says that also in, any di in infinite dimension, okay, we cannot sp speak about so easily about ellipsoids and so on, <laughs> but, uh, but at least we can say that still uh, there is some uniform convexity hidden in the geometry. Okay? OK, so now the proof. So let me consider x plus y. Divided by 2. I want to, to work on this, OK? 
So, so let me consider this. I want to say, so what is this? OK, let, let me write down. So what, what do we know? We know that the parallelogram identity holds, right? So x plus y squared plus x minus y squared equal x squared plus y squared. This we know. OK. So in particular, uh, we know now, let me divide it by, uh, f uh, by 2 once more. So uh, if I put a, uh, a 2 here, and if I put a 2 here, then I have 1 half, right? OK? Then I have 1 half, OK? And therefore, from this, I can, uh, I can, I can um, find that this is equal to 1 half. There is a mistake. 1 over 4. 1 over 4. Why 1 over 4? This is, this is a 1 over 4 outside. Yeah. But the parallelogram identity has 1 over. Ah, OK. OK. So there is 1. Uh, OK. So, so, so let, let me just write this. Minus x minus y over 2 squared. So that I, I have almost everything that I need because this is my thesis. And this is something related to my hypothesis. OK? So what do I know by assumption? I know that this is less than or equal than 1. Hmm? This is less than or equal than 1. And I know that this divided by 4, so uh, this divided by 2, uh, is larger than uh, y over 2. Therefore, I know that this square is less than or equal than epsilon square over 4, right? Hmm? So this is equal to 1 minus epsilon square over 4. Uh, that's it. One minus epsilon square over four. Okay. And this is almost what we, what we need, because now we just only have to, to take the square root. Huh? Uh, so, so we have uh, x plus y divided by 2 now is less than or equal than the square root. The square root one minus epsilon square over four. Over? Eight. There is an eight here. No, 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 it's true. But this, I mean, this square root is less than. This is less than one minus epsilon square. Ah yes, but now I don't. I. You mean this? Yes, yes. But what I can do also is just. Uh, do this trick. Uh, and define this uh, equal minus delta. So the delta is 1 minus square root of. <laughs> so delta is 1 minus square root of 1 minus epsilon square root of 4 without doing any Taylor expansion, anything. <laughs> OK? Which is positive. Delta is positive. OK. OK. Um, so in particular, the unit ball of L2, so 
the unit ball over 2 we know something is uniformly convex because we have a scalar an inner product on the 2 ok fine so uh, this has been done essentially without any just only working on the algebraic uh, inequalities, uh, linearity, sublinearity, subadditivity, and so on. Now we, we, we need on V some more structure. For, uh, on V, we had, uh, OK. Um, well, we have used continuity. On uh, so our our vector space actually, when we 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 talk about continuity of A, maybe it would be better to say that. Okay, but but now we, we put some more assumptions and we will it is more clear what is an Hilbert space and so on. So so uh, definition. Everybody knows what is a Hilbert space. So let me let me denote it by H, maybe. So what, what is an Hilbert space? It's a, it's a vector space endowed by with an inner product. Inner product. And such that, you know, what is this? Therefore, there is a norm. Uh, so it becomes, say, a metric space. Uh, so the distance between two points is uh, x minus y. This is a distance. This becomes a metric space. Uh, OK, that is, everybody knows, I think, what is a distance. So ch check that this is a distance. Uh, so triangular property, non-negativity, symmetry, etc. And then this is called Hilbert when it is it is when what happens is complete is complete so H is complete hmm? okay. So, and Banach space, which is the difference? Well, the difference is that Banach space, you don't, have, you don't have the inner product, but you just have the norm. Therefore, again, you can measure the distance. And uh, uh, when it is complete, it is called the Banach space. Hmm? OK? Everybody knows. Fine. Ak complete and Akka is called Hilbert space. OK, so now uh, you know what is a separable space? Separable space, no? Uh, definition, H is called separable if it admits, it admits if it admits a subset which is count dense and countable. A countable dense subset. Hmm. Separable. So the theorem, well now we want to understand a little bit what is this, this, this L2. OK, so let me state the theorem. L2 is a separable Hilbert space. Hmm. OK, therefore, this says that it is separable and it is complete. OK? okay. 
proof. Hmm? Other questions? No. So we, now the, the idea of now of today is that we want from, from now on we understand a little bit something about this, uh, this space. Uh, this theorem is important because at the end essentially all separable Hilbert spaces, all, are isomorphic to small L2. Hmm? Yes, in any infinite dimensional separable Hilbert space is isomorphic to L2. There is a way to write an isomorphism between this Hilbert separable infinite dimensional space and L2. So this says that this is a model like, like Rn. I mean, if you know that V is a vector space of finite dimension, then V is a copy of Rn for some n, okay? And therefore, you always think about Rn. No? Now, this theorem, so the, the, the theorem that I mentioned is important because it says that if you have a separable infinite dimensional Hilbert space, then we can think of it as a small L2. That's, that's, so, that's why it's so important uh, to, uh, to understand what is this. Of course, there are, there are Hilbert spaces which are non-separable, unfortunately. There are. Hmm? And not so easy to find examples, but there are. Hmm? And hence, uh, uh, this does not cover all Hilbert spaces. But, I mean, uh, usually the Hilbert space that one has to work with is, is separable. So uh, this is, OK. So now, OK, so now we have to exhibit a dense, countable dense subset of L2. So let me call it uh, uh, D. Is the set of all point Q in L2 uh, such that uh, Q has only a finite number of non-zero uh, uh, coordinates. Q has only finite number number of non z I mean q is a sequence right q is a sequence so but I'm saying that definitely this sequence is zero so so it's only finite number of non zero elements by element I, I mean an element of the sequence and q and the non zero element are all rational. Eh? And the non-zero element belongs to Q. Hmm? Okay, so we, we know what is an element of D. Just a finite the, the, the zero from, from just an index to infinity and before uh, rational numbers, okay? So D is countable, okay? Now uh, we want to show that this D is dense, okay? So to do this, let us fix epsilon. So let fix a point X in L2 and the epsilon positive. Huh? So since x is in L2, we know that the sum from 1 to infinity of xk square is finite. OK? This is finite. So um, therefore, we can choose uh, capital N. Uh, sorry, uh, n bar in n such that uh, 
such that the sum from n bar plus 1 infinity x squared is less than, say, epsilon over 2, I think is enough. I think is enough. Yes. And then, moreover, for any, for any index k from 1 to uh, n bar, choose choose uh, a, a rational number qk so that uh, um, qk minus xk is less than epsilon over 2 n bar. Okay? Epsilon over 2 uh, epsilon over n bar. Hmm? Ah, two square root of n bar. You need the square root. Okay, maybe you are right. I, don't know, but let, let, I will adjust the square root uh, at the end. Okay. So now I define Q as Q1, Q, K, n bar, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Okay. This is an element of D. Okay. It's okay. So Q is an element of D because it has just only finite number of entries and each entry is rational. Hmm? Now I have to see that Q is close to X in the distance of L2 by epsilon. Hmm? So that then is dense. Um, Okay, uh, and so I have just to compute the distance in L2 between Q and X, which is nothing else uh, X minus Q, which is nothing else uh, by the square root. And now there is the famous square root. Uh, the sum of XK minus QK square plus the sum xk square, okay, which is less than or equal to what? So, less than or equal then epsilon square, yeah, okay, less than or equal then. Here we have uh, maybe epsilon square over 2, over, over 4 over 2. Okay. And here, what do we have? Uh, epsilon square. Uh, epsilon square uh, over 2. It seems to be, uh, uh, you're right because there is a square, eh? One half. Hmm? Well, which is epsilon? Okay. Hence, uh, for any x, for any epsilon, there exists q in d such that this is less than epsilon. This means that d is separable. Uh, that, uh, a, that L2 is separable. Okay? Okay, nice. Then we have to show that uh, that is complete. So, hence... Uh, L2 is separable. 
now we have to show it is complete. So let us take a sequence, a Cauchy sequence, let me denote it by uh, Xn. A Cauchy sequence. Pay attention, each Xn is a sequence, okay? So this is not so easy, eh? This, this is a sequence of sequences, huh? Cauchy sequence, and I want to show that X con N converges to some element uh, in L2, okay? So what does it mean that X con N is a Cauchy sequence? It means that for any epsilon positive, exist, uh, let me call it uh, uh, n bar, such that for any m n bigger than n bar, we have that the distance uh, in L2 between these two elements is less than epsilon, okay? Less than uh, less than epsilon, okay, less than epsilon. Uh, so le let me, um, let me write more explicitly what is this. So this is the distance in L2, huh? therefore this is the sum, therefore the sum, huh? from k to 1 to infinity of x n k minus x m k square uh, is less than epsilon square. And this happens for any n, so for any epsilon the exi positive exists n bar such that this happens for any n and m bigger or equal than n bar, okay? Hmm? Fine. Okay. okay, now now I just take just one component of this sum, okay? In particular, for any k uh, from one to, for any k, we have that x k n minus x k m is less than epsilon. Hmm? For any k, because I just take one element of this sum. So, and this gives me an information about uh, this, uh, this sequence, x k uh, n Huh? Now, t uh, think about k to be fixed. Now, this is a sequence uh, in n. So if k is fixed, this is a sequence in n. And this is a Cauchy sequence in R. Now, is it clear? Mm -hmm. huh? So, this, as a, if considered for k fixed, k fixed, this, considered as a sequence with respect to the index capital N, is now Cauchy. Because fixed K for any epsilon existent bar such that uh, this is less than epsilon for any. This. So this is Cauchy in R now. And we know that R is complete. So it is very important for us to work with objects with values in a complete uh, uh, field. Okay, for simplicity we work in R, we could work in C and so on. But now what matters here is that this is complete. So this means that this sequence converges as n goes to infinity to some point of R that I denote by xk. Hmm? So xkn converges as n goes to infinity to some point xk that denoted by xk. Okay. Therefore, I have. So you see what's happening. I mean, 
If I have a Cauchy sequence in the, in the norm of the, in the distance of the space, then all projections converges, which is sort of say, uh, saying something like, uh, do you know what is the convergence of all projections? Which topology, I mean, on L2, now we are, we are considering a topology which is induced by the distance. This is our L2, right? So we are working with topology induced by the distance. This is our interest. However, here we are, we are, we are finding a convergence of all, co of all components. So you, do you know what is the topology that, uh, that implies convergence of all projections? Is the product topology. Uh, so uh, we, we have shown that at least uh, we, we don't have converged for the moment. We don't have convergence in topology of L2. Uh, but we have at least convergence in the product topology. This is not enough. Indeed, the two topologies on L2 are different. Eh? So, uh, okay. Uh, and therefore, we have, so, so at least we have something. So now the point is, of course, we have a candidate for being the limit in L2, not in the product topology. Right? This is the, the natural candidate for any K. So, uh, uh, so, so now uh, we have to show, show that Xn converges to X in L2. Where x, x is equal to x1, x2, etc. And these are obtained as limits as before. Okay? So this is what remains to show. Hmm? Uh, so x, x is belong to uh, Yeah, and we have to show, you are right, we have to show that first, you are right, x is in L2, where x is this. You're right. The first thing to do is to prove that this object is in L2, and then that the convergence takes place in L2. Okay, this is what remains to do. Uh, time is over. We will do this tomorrow. Remember that we are we are, we are here at the moment. For the moment, we are here. Uh, just another small uh, small exercise for you. So, the, so, so we, we, we continue tomorrow. We need 10 minutes more. And so just a homework. Consider the following object. Hmm? Is it possible? Uh, does C contains a ball of L2, an L2 ball? I mean, you have this cube. This cube has a name. It's called Hilbert cube. Huh? It's a Hilbert cube. The, you see, the sum of one k square converges. So it is an Hilbert, and C. Therefore, it is immediate to check that C is contained in L two. Okay. Because the sum. So you have this infinite cube, and each time, each time you increase the dimension, the size of the cube goes to zero, huh? uh, smaller and smaller. And the point is, um, can I put it inside the ball of L2? 
try to prove that this is not possible. Of course, this is a first hint that says that the, we, the problem is infinite dimensional. Because it, it is true, it is not possible. In infinite dimension, it is always possible. Because all norms are equivalent. So you can always do this, right? In finite dimension, you can always do this. So all norms are equivalent. Now the point, can you put, now, so you cannot. I mean, it is impossible. And try to see why. Try to prove that this is not possible tomorrow. So tomorrow we will continue the proof. Need some 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Then we will continue on the geometry of L2, small, small L2. Okay.